Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in. My name is Kendall and I'm a park program assistant with Sonoma County Regional Parks. Today we are out here social distancing at the beautiful Laguna de Santa Rosa Trail in Santa Rosa. And we're here to teach you about ticks, how to avoid them, why it's important to avoid them, and why they also play a really important role in our local ecosystems. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the, of the Southern Pomo people. And on behalf of myself and Sonoma County Regional Parks, we would like to honor their past, present, and future generations. Uh, if you haven't been out to this park before, I definitely recommend it. It's a beautiful little trail through a wetland and offers stunning views of wildlife and especially birds in the fall and spring uh, when they're migrating. And if you have any nature loving friends who you think should learn more about ticks, please feel free to share this video with them. And remember, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them at the end. Now, you may know a little bit about ticks already. Maybe you know that they attach themselves to you or that they carry Lyme disease, but there's so much that we should know before we go out and spend time in nature. So to start, Ticks are arachnids, uh, meaning that they're in the family with spiders, mites, and scorpions, unlike most people would think. Uh, most people think that they're insects. And ticks really only feed on blood. That is their only source of food throughout their lifetime. And they have three different stages in their life, including larva, nymph, and the adult. Uh, at each stage of their life, they consume a meal, uh, to be able to move on to the next stage in their life. Uh, when they are younger, they tend to feed on smaller mammals like squirrels and other rodents. And as they get older and are in their adult stage of life, they typically feed on deer and humans like us. Uh, once a tick has found a host and is ready to eat, it cuts into our skin, uh, inserts its feeding tube into your body, and then uses a cement-like substance to seal its feeding tube into your skin, um, which is really gross. And uh, a fun fact that you should know about ticks uh, is that they don't have any interest in hanging out on you forever. This was a misconception that I had, um, but ticks only feed, depending on the species and uh, what stage they are in their life, only three to 10 days off of one host. Uh, so once they're done and their tummies are full, they are happy to leave you afterwards. Um, some other weird fun facts about ticks are that they can live two to three years without feeding in their adult life cycle, and they can live 15 days underwater. Um, and like I said previously, you may know that ticks carry Lyme disease, but there's actually a multitude of diseases that they can carry. In California, there are eight diseases uh, that you can get from ticks. Um, and all of these uh, diseases have very similar symptoms, including fever, fatigue, headaches, and aches. All of these diseases are, treated, are treatable with uh, antibiotics, but it's important to catch it early because they can have reoccurring symptoms throughout their life or throughout an individual's life. Um, and it's really important to know what they look like before going out on the trail. So we are going to teach you about what they look like today. I have this image and this has some pictures of three different species of ticks on it. Um, in the top corner, you can see a blown up image of a dime. And on the other side, there's a ruler um, that's blown up as well. So it really shows you how small these ticks really are. It also shows you the different stages in their life. The smallest one being the larva, then the nymph then both the adult male and female are on there. Uh, as you can see, ticks have eight legs, no matter the species, and they typically have a teardrop-shaped body. Uh, they do vary in color and pattern, uh, but when they're super small, they primarily look like a dark brown color for the most part. Uh, this top tick is actually the black-legged tick, and that is the tick that carries Lyme disease in California. It's the only tick that carries Lyme disease in California. And I actually have this even more cute picture of this tick super blown up, um, just to give you an idea of what they look like. 
Uh, and yeah, so that one's super fun to look at. All right, so there's actually only six species of ticks that attach to uh, humans in California out of the 48 species in California. And so only one of those carries Lyme disease, but the other ticks do carry other forms of disease. Um, and specifically with, with the Western black-legged tick, um, it, not every tick has Lyme disease. It's only a certain percentage of their population that does. Um, and this can vary by range in California. And in Sonoma County, it's actually a pretty low number, but there's always a chance. So when you are out on the trail, it's really important to prepare yourself properly. The first thing I always recommend is wearing long sleeves and long pants. Uh, you kind of want it to be tight fitting, not too tight, but you definitely don't want something flowing behind you. Uh, it's a really good idea to wear light colors like a tan or beige. Uh, so that way you can see if ticks are crawling on your clothing while you're out on the trail. Another thing that a lot of people who spend a lot of time outdoors do is they treat their clothing with permethrin. Uh, it's an insecticide that repels ticks. So that's really good to do. Another thing is when you are out on the trail, it's always a good idea to stay on the trail because ticks really like to hang out in tall grasses like these. Um, so if you're walking off the trail and through tall grasses, there's a better chance that you're going to get ticks. And I know this from personal experience be that these uh, tactics really work because my first time coming out to this park, I did absolutely everything wrong and I came home with six ticks. I was wearing a long flowy dark jacket. Uh, I was walking on the edge of the trail through all of the um, tall grasses and I paid for it. Uh, and then remember when you get home, it's important to do a tick check. I recommend doing it right before you get in the shower. And the best places to check are in the dark corners of your body. So behind your ears, on your scalp, under your armpits, in between your toes, any dark place in your body that you think a tick might be able to hide from you. Uh, and then it's good to shower off. And it's also really important to wash your clothes afterwards. This one doesn't seem as important, uh, but that super fun time that I came home with six ticks, I hung up my jacket, um, did a tick check that night, didn't find anything, wore my jacket the next day, found two more ticks on me, took it off, put it back, then wore it the next day and found another tick and realized that my jacket was just hosting all of them and they were waiting for me to put on that jacket again. Uh, so that's why it's a really great idea to wash your clothes or at least check your clothes really thoroughly before putting them back on the hanger. Uh, and if you do find a tick on your body, please don't panic. There's plenty of easy ways to get them off. The first thing I would recommend is using a tick key like this one. Uh, it's you just put the tick key on your skin, uh, the hole goes where the tick is, and you slide it down and the tick should pop off pretty easily. Um, if you don't have a tick key, it's not a big deal. A nice pair of tweezers like this one will do, but you really want it to have those sharp ends so you make sure you're getting the whole tick. Another important thing when you are removing the tick is people all tend to think that it's a good idea to twist the tick or jerk it off but you really just wanna get close and pull it straight out to make sure that that feeding tube doesn't stay in your skin. Uh, when consider, if you do get a tick, it's important to consider when the last time you were outdoors was, um, because if it's been within 24 to 48 hours of when the tick bit, there's a chance that you don't have any diseases, whether it carries it or not, uh, because it takes longer than that for the disease to be passed on to you. But if you're not sure how long it's been or you know it's been longer than a couple days, there are options for you as well. If you take your tick and put it in a plastic bag with a wet paper towel, you can send your tick into a lot of online services that will check to see if that tick has any diseases, including Lyme disease. That way, even if you're having symptoms or not, you can uh, figure out if you could potentially have any disease because the earlier you treat it, the better it will be long term. Uh, and the last thing I really want to talk about is how ticks are important to our local ecosystems. Uh, the first thing that ticks do in our local ecosystems is act as a food source. 
There are many species of reptiles, amphibians, and birds that love to eat ticks. Um, and there's actually one bird species called guinea fowl that is used as a tick population control in place where there's too many ticks. Uh, another thing that's really important to discuss is why disease is important in our local ecosystems. Because as humans, we tend to look at disease as a really negative thing and something we want to eradicate. But in the natural world, it plays a really important role in population control. And um, ecologists also use ticks um, as a way to determine the health of, a pop or of an ecosystem. Depending on whether a tick population increases or decreases, uh, it could let ecologists know that some other species within the ecosystem might be struggling or doing well. All right, Nayeli, do we have any questions? We have one comment from Shane saying, don't forget to check your four-legged friends as well. Oh, yes, always important to check your pets when you get home as well. Is that all for today? All right. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Tune in next Thursday at 2.30 to learn about some coastal treats with my friend Ellie. And we will see you next time. Thanks.